Hey everyone, today I've got a pretty great AI filmmaking workflow to share with you. And I think it has a lot of interesting potential from pre-production all the way to generating short films. It's a bit of a kit bash, but the results are really promising. As we can see in examples from Friends of the Channel, Uncanny Harry, and Jeff Synthesized. Of course, I'm putting my own spin on it, so we'll be digging through everything that I learned, hopefully saving you some time, should you decide to try this workflow out. Okay, let's dive in. So the inspiration for this workflow oddly comes from the 2016 Gareth Edwards film Rogue One, which as I think about it is appropriate considering that it does have historical significance as featuring the first major film with a fully deep fake character. People definitely have feelings about that film, and yes, it can be a bit of a mess. I personally have always liked it, but you can clearly tell that there were production and script issues. But there was one really interesting story that came out in a 2017 interview with editor Colin Gouldy, where he talked about a feature-length story reel that he ripped together before the script was even finished. There was no screenplay. There was just a story breakdown at that point, scene by scene. He got me to rip hundreds of movies and basically make Rogue One using other films so that they could work out how much dialogue they actually needed in the film. By making the whole film that way, I used a lot of Star Wars films, but also hundreds of other films too. It gave us a good idea of the timing. I've always wondered what that reel looked like. I mean, it is probably completely incomprehensible to anyone that wasn't involved in the production. But the story has always stuck around in my head and it did get me thinking, could we do something similar using our current AI tools, but take things one step further, creating sort of a hybrid storyboard animatic animation. So taking that idea and applying it to the famous Are You Not Entertained scene from Gladiator by way of John Carter from Mars, another movie that's kind of a mess but I find entertaining, and just a dash of Warhammer 40k gives us this. <laughs> So that was all wholly AI generated or at least augmented. So let's break it down to see uh, how it's done, what works and what doesn't work. So the first step was obviously clipping out our reference footage and then from there, taking it over to Viggle.ai, which we looked at previously. Viggle just rolled out a 2.0 update and it, yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, if you missed the full like walkthrough tutorial on Viggle, uh, you can check it out. It is linked down below though. You can probably follow along with this very easily. Uh, yes, 2.0. Still does all of the dancing stuff, although Martin Harlan did figure out a pretty great use case for some of those dance moves, creating this T800 T1000 dance off. And I mean, just this is something that I did not know I needed in my life. So, rolling over to Mid Journey to create our model for our main character, uh, who's dressed like one step shy of Sean Connery and Zardos. Uh, if you've never seen Sean Connery in that film, I'm sorry that image is now burned into your mind. I've lived with it for a very long time. You can obviously use whatever image generator that you want. I think the important detail here is to have a 916 format and make sure that you're getting head to toe. So use prompts like full body, head to feet. From here, we're back over to Viggle and by using the command forward slash mix, you'll be prompted for an image source, a video source, and then options for background and fine tune. We'll talk about those in one second. Uh, for our image source, obviously it will be our character shot. Uh, for our video source, I'm using this, which is actually not the are you not entertained shot, but rather the is this not why you're here shot. Options for background are white or green. You'll want to definitely have it on a green screen background and then just make sure your fine tune is turned on. Running that gets us this, which is obviously a bit stuttery and kind of a mess. Don't worry, we're going to clean all of this up. One thing I've definitely noticed is that Viggle doesn't really respond well to camera movement, which is why in a lot of like the you know dancing videos that we see, they're always locked down shots. Two other quick points, namely about our God Emperor shot at the end, uh, doing the thumbs up, thumbs down. But I did choose to kind of leave it ambiguous because it's a 15 second short and I'm still thinking narratively, it's a cliffhanger. Initially trying out this mid journey image and using that as a reference for Joaquin Phoenix's arm raise, yielded some results like this, where he has kind of like this invisible forearm. Or as another note, when we had this close-up shot in which the top of his head is cropped in frame, uh, you know, when you run it through Viggle, you end up with a result like this. Which to be honest, I can't get mad at Viggle for, you know, it took what we gave it. 
It just reminds me of the Ray Liotta scene from Hannibal. I mean, between this and the Sean Connery image from earlier, this video is taking some weird turns. The solution to all of this was by utilizing Leonardo.ai, uh, grabbing a screenshot of Joaquin Phoenix doing the hand raise uh, and bringing that in, using that as an image to image reference, keeping the image strength actually rather low at 0 0.3 and utilizing the prompt God Emperor King, Warhammer 40K, arena in the background and running that, we ended up with this. Now, I think the trick in bringing this back over to Viggle was by using an image reference with the hand already raised, Viggle was able to figure out like essentially what we were aiming for. That said, he is definitely still on the shaky side, looks like an emperor who has had way too much coffee today. So the solve to all of our shaky footage is actually by bringing everything over to Kyber.ai and using their new Motion 3.0 feature. So I have been pretty bullish on Kyber, namely because I think it's probably one of the most unique AI video generators around. And when you factor in the new Motion 3.0 model, which should be released like literally any day now, hopefully by the time that you watch this, uh, you end up with a generator that does some pretty interesting and unique stuff. So in this case, we're going to take our Viggle output, bring it into Kyber, um, giving it the prompt male cyberpunk warrior, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Can you smell what he's cooking? Uh, I only did that because I feel that within Kyber, when you name an actor, it's not necessarily going to look like the actor, but it's going to end up creating some level of consistency with that character's face. Uh, in this case, I did leather armor, no shirt and yelling. And then I did that in the style of, it's, it's one of the presets, the three the rendering style. From here, we just make sure the new 3.0 model is turned on. And then on the evolve slider, just turn it down to zero. If you crank it up, you kind of get that shifty warpy look that Kyber is kind of known for. Uh, but with 3.0, if we turn it down to zero, you're not going to get as much of that. Ended up pretty happy with our output. So here is where things get pretty interesting because now we're going to start moving into our background comp. So the way that I thought that things ended up working best was to take a screenshot once again of one of our initial frames of the reference video, bring it back over to Leonardo.ai and use that as an image reference. The overall idea being is that your background would then match the same angle as your character. Now, we do have the problem of a character being here as well. Uh, you could either go into the canvas feature uh, of Leonardo.ai, or you can do what I did. I brought it over to Photoshop, just lassoed around the character and using Gen Fill uh, with the prompt, no character, um, we ended up removing the character. Now that said, there's some smudging going on right here. Not a huge deal, considering that essentially that's where our character is going to go. Now, I didn't want just a static background. I wanted some movement and some life happening, uh, you know, as you would in the actual film. Uh, so I took the backplate and brought it over to Gen 2, where I did give it the very just simple command of a move to the right. Now, things do go into like a very, very soft depth of field thing here, but that's okay because we actually kind of want that in this case. Um, so now taking this and then running our backplates through Kyber as well, just to give everything kind of a unified, cohesive look. Now, if you're wondering why we're taking the extra step of that Gen 2 output, running it through Kyber on its own, as opposed to taking the Gen 2 output, marrying it with our Kyber character, and then just baking it in Kyber together, uh, the reason for that is that extra layer of stylization on your initial Kyber character once again occurs and you're just gonna end up with a lot more morphing and inconsistencies. From here, we take both our Kyber background and our character background and bring them into a video editor. Uh, here I'm using Premiere, you can use really any of them. Uh, DaVinci, you'll be able to do this as well. And DaVinci is free if you don't have one already. Um, so on the top layer here, we have our character and beneath him, uh, on this layer, we have our background. Um, so just sliding those two together and then using a chroma key remover in Premiere, it's called Ultra Key. We just take our little eyedropper and drop onto this color and uh, boom, now they're more or less comp together. Now, a few tricks here. Uh, you can play around with the choke, soften, and contrast on your characters uh, in your chroma key remover. I did find that if you put a Gaussian blur onto your character, like just really, really subtle, in this case, it's actually just set to two, um, it just kind of helps sell the character, you know, kind of comped into that background. A little color correction never hurts as well. DaVinci users, I mean, you have a whole suite of tools available to you there. And the other plus side is that, again, because these two are comped together, we can actually move our character and reframe them however we want as well. 
as a final touch just to make things feel a little more cinematic i did add in uh black bars at the top and the bottom so it's like faux letterbox so for our crowd chanting i ended up using the uh, totally free site audio gen to generate that audio so uh using the prompt crowd chanting in an arena uh, we got this <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's fine. It's just background sound. Uh, for the dialogue, I did the thing that I think that everybody probably initially thinks of. Uh, I went over to Eleven Labs, but surprisingly ended up having a lot of trouble. Uh, I initially tried speech to speech and taking the clip of Russell Crowe saying, is this not why you're here, uh, yielded some pretty terrible results. Is this true about your hair? <laughs> Mrs. Lovayo, yeah. Mrs. Lovayo, yeah. So yeah, a bit of a mess. And I wasn't necessarily overall thrilled with any of the straight text-to-speech versions of it either. Uh, so I actually just ended up finding an alternate Again, another free source called Typecast. I ended up using uh, the Frankenstein model and we ended up getting this. Is this not why you are here? Sounds a little bit more like the Hulk, but whatever. It's It works for you know our demo purposes here. Finally, rounding out for the soundtrack, I probably could have just used Suno, which their V3 model, by the way, is now open to everyone, even if you're on the free tier. But I just ended up going into Ableton and put together uh, a quick like 20 second cue, uh, just basically using loops. So overall, is this method perfect? No, it is not. Is it watchable as a full feature film? That's eh, debatable, but I do think that it works pretty well for a short film. But if you're working on pre-production on, say, a giant Star Wars movie, or even if you're just a small indie filmmaker, I think that this method is a lot more useful and productive than, say, just, you know, ripping a bunch of movies together. My head has been really spinning with incorporating other tools into this kit bashing technique, and I do have some more workflow videos coming up very soon. So if you're interested in that and you have not had the chance to yet, I do invite you to hit the like and subscribe button. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.